thank you for joining us and would you gather your families around with you? My name is Jeff and I'm the lead pastor here and it's my joy and privilege to lead you each week through what God is saying prophetically to his church, to this family that he's brought and linked together and that he has great plans for. You are involved in that. Whether this is your first visit with us or you've been here for years, God has this for you. It's your destiny. And I'm hoping that you're as excited as I am to get on this journey with us. We need some comforting right now. And we need whatever certainty we can get at this time. So here's where we are as a church, as the rock, as this spiritual family that God has brought and knit together and is knitting together. Starting with the technical stuff. I'm, I'm going to reference my notes a lot here, so bear with me. Foursquare National Leadership continues to direct us to recognize and submit to state and local guidelines and directives regarding this pandemic. We are abiding by these directives because I do not perceive them as an attack on our Christian faith or an attack upon the church. This impacts Jewish Sabbath gatherings, and it impacts uh, Islamic chants and Hindus and, and Baha'i and no one's being singled out here. It impacts and affects us all. We, Christians, The Rock, our church comprised of Jesus-loving, Holy Spirit-filled believers are not being singled out. No one is hindering our church from worshiping God in word and in deed. Can I say that line again? No one is hindering our church from worshiping God fully in word and in deed. God is looking for surrendered souls. You know, it's, it's really easy to, to come to church sometimes and sing a few songs. It's more challenging to surrender, to sacrifice, and to serve. I interviewed a couple this week who are seeking to be certified house church leaders within The Rock. And they said that somebody recently asked them, are, are you a real Christian or are you one of the other ones? <laughs> I don't even know what to make of that. But they were a little taken aback and flabbergasted. But uh, whether it's your first time here, I, I should probably tell you, we are going to be real Christians here at The Rock. And so, I, I will tell you how things operate. I preach real. I don't put on some preachery voice to try to impress you or to look super cool. No, I just preach the Bible uncompromised so that you will know at all times what God is saying prophetically to you. You know, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. Another translation says without a vision, the people cast off restraint. Neither is good. And so this prophetic vision that the Lord brings us, I give to you uncompromised so you know exactly what God is saying. Even, frankly, if I'd prefer the scripture say something different. Come on, are you like me? Every once in a while you're like, really? <laughs> That's in there? Yes, it is. And so I tell you the truth no matter what it costs, what it costs me, what it costs you, because this is what God has for us to get his best plan lived out in each one of our lives. Amen. I sing to you, and not just because Shay enjoys it, although I appreciate that. That's nice. I sing to you. It's just who I am. Uh, my parables often come in movie references, so expect a lot of that. <laughs> I don't allow for any of us to easily not obey God and His Word. We don't pander, we don't patronize, and we don't drum up a bunch of hype. Jesus is enough, and His call on our lives is enough. I'll tell you what we do here. We build solid lives. We are called to be fruitful and multiply, and that the fruit that we bear shall remain forever, into eternity, into heaven, for countless people that we're ushering into the kingdom and the family of God. We exist to live out the great commandment, which is love God first and best, and love your neighbor exactly as well as you love yourself and the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to obey Jesus. And we can right now become the family that God has always wanted us to be. We can do that right now. Again, nothing is hindering us. This sounds like the church, doesn't it? And it doesn't sound like the church just that I'd like. It sounds like the church I read about in the Bible. 
the church that was getting results and transforming the world that was in chaos and darkness. I think we have that same kind of world right now, don't you? A world in chaos and darkness. And you are the light of the world, Jesus said. So let's start shining that light, pouring that new wine freely. Amen. Now about this pandemic. What are we going to do in this mess and all the havoc this this creating, right? Allow me to read you two powerful passages that spoke to my heart. The first is by N.T. Wright called God and the Pandemic. It says, One of the overreaches of government in this has been to forbid pastoral ministry to those in hospitals and our nursing homes who are dying to have those last few moments of prayer, comfort, and assurance. We can worship from home. We can sing. We can give from home, minister at home, but we can't be Christ embodied when we can't be physically near someone nearing death. Since the first century, Christians have been known as those who ran to catastrophe, not away from it. Evangelism wasn't even a kind of program. People simply saw the love and the compassion, the value of all life demonstrated by Christians and they wanted to know more about it. For the first 400 years of the church, none of the church fathers wrote a single line about evangelism, but the church was growing because of stuff just like this. Now here's an excerpt from a letter from Martin Luther in his Letters of Spiritual Counsel. He says, and I echo this by the way, in my own thoughts and my own heart, With God's permission, the enemy has sent poison and deadly dung among us. And so, I will pray to God that he may be gracious and preserve us. Then I will fumigate to purify the air, give and take medicine, and avoid places and persons where I am not needed in order that I may not abuse myself and that through me others may not be infected and inflamed with the result that I become the cause of their death through my negligence. If God wishes to take me, he knows where to find me. At least I have done what he gave me to do and am responsible neither for my own death nor for the death of others. But if my neighbor needs me, I shall avoid neither person nor place, but feel free to visit and help him. This week, I had the privilege of praying with a family in our church, very dear to me and dear to many of us. Someone's been in the hospital and the doctors can do no more. They're at the end of their experience and their expertise, yet she wasn't yet home. And so I said, I believe God is hearing our prayers and wants her to be home with you. Why don't we pray and ask that right now? Because no matter what the communication has been, because it was not only she wasn't home, but they were having difficulty communicating with her even in the hospital because of the distancing. And I said, why don't we pray right now over the phone, and we're here on speakerphone, right? Let's pray and ask God that he will get her home to be loved on by her family, ministered to, even if she's on her way to heaven, that if there's nothing else the doctors can do, at least she can be at home around her family. Doesn't this sound right to you? Instead of away from everyone that she loves and who loves her and, uh, you know, all the rest. So we prayed and I said, listen, I expect the phone to ring or for them to answer your call immediately and this thing to be handled right away. So I said, don't be surprised if they call you as soon as I hang up. I found out the next day that she was home. Praise the Lord. See, we pray and we get answers here at The Rock. The Lord listens to his people. We're following him and he has plans, great plans for all of us. And so this thing where, yeah, social distancing and all that, but as a family unit, we got to come together. And so she was brought home, hallelujah, everything is good. And now you know what your pastors are committed to. What I just read you, that's what we're committed to. Yes, we're going to follow the guidelines. Yes, we're going to obey the governing authorities. And we're also going to make sure that if someone needs us, we are on the spot, not only in prayer, but if we need to go visit somebody to accomplish pastoral ministry, you know, this is that leaves the 99 and goes after the one. This is the application and this is what you can depend on us for. 
I know it's not comfortable necessarily for all of us not meeting in our regular ways, meeting all at, at one big church all together at one time. However, that's not the only way the Lord works and it's not how he's intending to work in this moment. So if you'll let him, along with Pastor Jennifer and me, you will see great things, great deliverances, miracles from your hands and ours. In the name of Jesus we pray.